Einstein, uh, Einstein said that compounding was the eighth wonder of the world. And, um, and it is. So, so we, all, we all learn about interest rates and growth of uh, things over time and different things like that. But, but I think that is, it is a huge advantage if you can understand the power of compounding and if you can do a bunch of math related to compounding in your head. So what I'm going to do is just kind of throw out some, uh, some terms. And some of the math, actually, that we're going to do, I've not done myself, so I'll be doing it on the fly, uh, which will be kind of fun. So, uh, so I'll, I'll take one example from uh, a letter Warren Buffett wrote to his investors in the 1950s. I think it was like 58 or 59. Uh, and he said that the, uh, the Indians, uh, the American Indians who were based in, in Manhattan, what was Manhattan in New York, in 1626, it's rumored uh, that they sold the island of Manhattan to the Dutch for $24. Uh, that was the, the, the sale price. And of course, when people hear that, they say, you know, $24, you know, the Indians got taken for a ride and, and such. But uh, let's say the Minuit Indians, I think they were the Minuit Indians who did that. Let's say the Minuit Indians had some kind of trust officer or investment officer in 1626. And, uh, um, the Dutch came to him, and uh, the, the, this deal was on the table of $24, and um, you could sell this undeveloped island. Um, so he would, he would probably think about, well, what are my alternative uses uh, if we don't do the deal, or what else can we do? And um, he'd probably run some numbers, and he would have probably concluded there was a fantastic deal. And why is it a fantastic deal? So let's say that $24 in 1626, uh, the, the Indians were able to take that, and invest it at something like 7% a year, for example. What would that $24 be today if it were invested at 7%? So uh, let's do the math uh, without any pencil or paper. So we, ha we have something known as the rule of 72, which some of you may be familiar with, which is that you know, if I have a 7% interest rate, I can take 72 divided by 7. It's approximately 10, which says that in 10 years, at a 7% interest rate, the money would double. OK? So basically, if in 1626 they sold for $24, in 1636 they would have $48, in 1646 they'd have $96, and so on. It'd keep doubling every 10 years. So uh, basically, if you take a 100-year period, uh, you get 2 to the power of 10. Uh, 2 to the power of 10 is a good number to know. It's 1,024. And let's throw away the 24, because that makes the math a little harder. So we have 1,000. So in a 100 years, whatever they got increases 1,000 times. So if in 1626 they got 24, in 1724 they have 24,000, OK? And in 1823 or whatever, they have uh, 1825, uh, they have 24 million. And by 1925, they have uh, 24 billion. And uh, 2025, which is nine years from now, uh, they have 24 trillion, right? Now, we are about 10 years away from the the 24 trillion and 10 years of the double. So today, they would have about 12 trillion, right? So we, we, we did the math without a calculator, which is great. Well done, Monish, OK? Uh, and, and the thing is, you can do the math yourself also. Without, and the important thing with compounding is to have the fluency to do it in your head, because it's, it's very important to be able to do this in your head, because it has huge impacts. So $24 in 1626, 7% compounded, is today 12 trillion. So what is the value of undeveloped, so let's say Manhattan today, the land of Manhattan, if it, if it, had, if it had no buildings on it? And, or, or let's say, let's put it this way, if I were to go and offer to buy everything in Manhattan, and then I subtract the cost of the buildings, which is the land value, because it's undeveloped land, would the land be at 12 trillion? Right? And the answer to that also is very simple. So the entire wealth of the planet, every man, woman, and child, everything they own, is 300 trillion. Uh, the entire wealth of the United States is 80 trillion. Um, it is very unlikely that uh, something like 15% of that 80 trillion is just Manhattan land. Uh, that's, that's, that's a, uh, and in fact, I think Warren calculated that, he, uh, I think he calculated in the 1960 or something, it was uh, 12 and a half or 12 billion or something. Actually, it was less than 12 billion, something, something like 10 billion. So you might get to a few hundred billion maybe in value uh, on a good day. So. The Indians, um, the Indians basically uh, sold Manhattan uh, at, a, at a rate where if they had held today, they had held that land till today, 
and they did the deal today, they would have basically lost uh, several trillion in value uh, by, by not doing the deal. Now, of course, the, the trust office of the Minute Indians uh, was an idiot in terms of investing, and he didn't get them to 12 trillion. But that's a different story. We'll get to that later. Uh, so, so how do we get $24 to become 12 trillion, right? So let's break that apart. Let's break that apart. There are two factors that lead to the 12 trillion. The first factor is the length of time. Okay, length of time is a very important variable in how much your money grows. And the second factor is the rate at which it grows, right? And what we found is that even at a not a very high rate, 7% is actually below what the S&P has done, you get some astounding results. Now, recently, I don't know whether you saw in the news, there was, uh, there was some uh, older gentleman who passed away some, in some way in the Northeast. He was a librarian, uh, you know, just middle class librarian all his life. And when he passed away, he gave the college where he worked $4 million. Um, and everyone was surprised that this guy who was very much a you know, mid middle class, uh, ordinary guy had actually got $4 million saved up. And of course, these journalists who wrote the article don't know how to do math and they didn't attend the lecture that we're just having. So they didn't understand kind of how things work with get, to, get to $4 million. So let's take a situation. Okay, so let's say there's an 18 year old. And let's say this 18 year old has very few skills and he can only get a minimum wage job, right? And so he's making you know, something like 15,000 per year, working 2,000 hours or so. And let's say, for example, he's able to save uh, something like 10%, maybe hard, but let's say he's living at home, et cetera, saves 10% of that 15,000 uh, before taxes because he can put it in an IRA or something. And uh, so his, his actual kind of uh, after-tax income might decline by 1,000. If he's working someplace where there's an employer match, some of you students will get employer matches and such in retirement accounts, so you might have to save less to get more. So if this person is 18 years old, saves $1,500, and let's say he keeps putting uh, the 1500 every year into a retirement account. And let's say, for example, that uh, he gets that something like a 7% return on that money. And let's say that his income goes up very modestly, like his income is only going up by 2% a year. And when it goes up by 2% a year, his savings go up by 2% a year. So instead of saving $1,500 uh, next year, he saves $1,530. So it goes up very slowly. And when he, uh, when he retires 50 years from now, which is at the age of 68, uh, he is at that point, 50 years later, making less than 50000 a year. He didn't have any significant growth in income, uh, just barely kept up with inflation and such. What would that person have? at the age of 68. Well, let me make it easy for you. Um, the first year, the first year when he saves the 1500, he's got 50 years. We know it's 7%. We know it doubles every 10 years. We know it's two to the power of five. We know two to the power of five is 32. And we know what 1500 times 32 is. So he's got uh, 48,000, right? So the first 80, what he saves at 18, at the age of 68 is 48,000, age of 19, uh, maybe somewhere similar to that, but you, you get the point as you go on. The end result, just to make it simpler for you, uh, is a little over a million dollars. Okay? So the li librarian is not making 15000 He's got a white-collar job. Uh, he's probably making somewhere less than a hundred and maybe more than forty or 50000 somewhere in that range. And uh, he paid attention when they were talking about compounding in math class. You know? And... Um, and he, if he makes four times what the guy with the minimum wage makes without doing anything esoteric, he ends up with a, a very significant uh, net worth. So, so the, 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 the question is, why, why doesn't everyone end up wealthy when we retire? Because there's not much required to become wealthy. You just have to follow a certain game plan, and you'll be there. And in fact, at the age of 68, uh, the guy was making less than 50000 he, he could start withdrawing uh, 50000 or more per year from that account and would outlast the rest of his life uh, because he'd have a 5% withdrawal rate and he's got a 7% uh, earnings rate, so he, the, num the money would actually keep growing. He'd, he'd probably end up making a $4 million donation to uh, another, another school or something. So compounding is a very important uh, element to understand. And again, 
What matters is it makes a huge difference if that person starts at the age of 18 versus 28. Huge difference. And um, my daughter, my, my younger daughter, uh, last year, uh, she interned at, uh, at a place and she got paid like uh, close to $5,000 during the internship, you know, expenses and such. So the money was just sitting there. So uh, I said, you know, you can open an IRA. And uh, so I, I uh, got her to open an IRA. And then I said, you know, if, you're, if you trust me, you can give me power of attorney and I can invest the money for you. And one time she was flying back from New York, she was very tired, and I just told her, you know, that $5,000 you gave me at the age of 18, um, it's, um, uh, I put it into one stock, you know, because, you know, we, we, can, uh, we can take some risk because you're just 18, you don't need the money. And um, uh, probably that, that stock doubled or tripled in the next two, three years because my best stock pick. And uh, so I said, you know, let's say it doesn't, doesn't even double or triple, let's say it, you know, goes at 15% a year or something. Uh, so 15%, rule of 72, every five years things double, right? And I ran the math for her. And I said, what does the 5,000 become at the age of 68, right? So you've got 50 years to the power of 10. Uh, so you've got uh, 10, uh, 10 doubles, you've got 1,000. Uh, you get to 1,000 times the 5,000, uh, which is 5 million. So I said, Mumachi, you know, you, you worked one summer, and in the age of 68, you'll have 5 million from the summer work. But then the next summer, you're going to work again, and uh, that'll become... 5 million at the age of 69. And at some point, you're going to graduate. And uh, you might make more than 5,000 in a year. And uh, you might actually save a few thousand dollars. And um, I said, what, what's your net worth at the age of 68? And I gave her some number. And by it was like 2 in the morning, I was picked up from the airport. And she was asleep. And she was wide awake. You know, so the, oh, like, how did that happen? You know, and, and what's going on? Like, you know, very, very, very focused. And uh, so the, the thing is, it's, it's the two pieces. The length of the runway is really important, right? So 50 years, number of doubles. It's all about the number of doubles. This is how Buffett thinks about it. How long does it take things to double? So if you ask Warren Buffett, Mr. Buffett, I'm the genie from Aladdin. You can have any wish you want. What would you like? You know? So you know what he would say? He says, I only want one wish, which is that when I'm dead and they look at me, they say, man, he was old, OK? <laughs> So, so he just wants to not die for as long as possible. And it's not like he loves all of us on planet Earth is why he doesn't want to die. He wants to compound. And he wants to keep compounding for as long as he can. And I think in his case, in his case, he's 86. And he started his compounding journey at the age of 11. And he actually understood compounding, I think, age of, age of 9 or 10. And I think at 24 or something, he told his wife that we are going to be wealthy beyond our dreams. We're going to have more money than we won't, we won't know what to do with it. And so we got a plan for, like, you know, what are we going to do with all this extra cash? And his wife thought, you know, this guy is, you know, because we can, we, we, I want to buy a house. We don't have money to buy a house. He thinks we're going to get super wealthy. What's going on? And of course, they did. So, so compounding is a very important element, no matter what your profession or, or, or uh, you know, calling in life ends up being. It's very important to have the fluency in math. Very important to understand the concept of a runway and the length, time it takes to double, and compounding rate. And don't take the retirement account or 401k or IRA, pull out the money and go on vacation. You know, uh, the, 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 the time value destruction of that is huge. Mm -hmm.